Um, so I'm going to take in a quick uh, tour through IMAP Invasives, highlighting some of the new uh, functionality that we have at um, version 1.6 we're at right now. Um, uh, if you can see on the screen, I got our login page. Uh, that hasn't changed yet, um, but we will be working on doing some updates to sort of the front end of IMAP. Um, probably in one of the next couple upcoming versions. Um, so I'm going to log in as a user level six. This is uh, for mm -hmm. anybody that would be registered to do treatment data or anything prior to um, any um, lower level um, logins as well would um, ha have, um, this would have mm -hmm. the functionality of lower logins as well. So um, most people that have used IMAP are probably familiar with the My IMAP Invasives page. Uh, that hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, we um, have the ability here to go view the map. We can enter data. Um, if you click on uh, the thumbnail image under Enter Data, that will bring you into entering observation data. Um, you can then, from after entering an observation, you can also enter an assessment. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between an observation and an assessment, so you always have to enter an observation before doing an assessment. Uh, then our survey data uh, and treatment data, I'll touch on those um, in a little bit. Uh, you can view tabular information, do custom observation query. We'll be actually adding functionality to do survey treatment and assessment queries in the near future. And um, you can just view tables of um, survey and treatment data as well, and then get custom reports. Uh, you can also edit your profile and uh, download any data that you are um, you have entered or that um, is in a for a project that you might be working on. So any, any that you would have permissions to download. Uh, we also have some other tabs above where uh, system management, um, there wouldn't be much for most people on there. Um, invasives management allows you to access a lot of the tabular data again. And then resources. And I'm just going to point out a couple things on our resource page before we uh, move on. Um, IMAP Invasives now has a Facebook page. Um, where we post uh, interesting tidbits that might come across our desk, uh, information on upcoming trainings. Uh, we'll be posting occasionally the um, sort of state of the database and what information we have in that. Um, we also now have a YouTube channel. Uh, this is going to be our main outlet for uh, online training. And uh, we have one video right now on there. I'm working on some new ones now that we're at our new version. Um, I didn't want to do some and, and then have the, uh, the database sort of change, change format. So um, that will be where you can get videos. And I'm also working on developing a training website. This is a, a posted through Google Sites, and we have the the link to the video training there as well, as well as the exam, which um, once you've taken the video training, you can participate in the, the little quiz, and then uh, we'll email you your login, provided you answered most of the questions correctly. So we'll get back to the My IMAP Invasives page. Um, Oh, before I forget, I should also mention we have two trainings coming up. One Sunday, November 13th at the uh, Saratoga Hilton. This will be held in conjunction with the New York Conference. Uh, it's going to start out with an hour or two of field data collection at Saratoga State Park, and then uh, we'll go enter that data, and it will cover everything from observation to uh, treatment data entry, um, and I'll also touch on some of our upcoming mobile options. So we're going to get into the map here now. Uh, for those of you who have used IMAP Invasives before, you'll notice some uh, sort of subtle changes to the interface. Uh, across the top here before, we had some tools for zooming in and zooming out and panning the map. 
that functionality has now been, and it always actually did exist in the mouse. Um, you can pan the, zoom the map in and out by using the scroll wheel, the wheel that sits between the left and right buttons on your on your mouse, and that'll um, zoom the map in and out. And you can pan the map either by left clicking and dragging the map or by holding down the uh, scroll wheel to move the map around. Um, and you also still have the slider bar for zooming in and zooming out there. We have this new search window, which is um, replace it, it basically gives you quick access to pretty much any piece of information you might be looking for in the database. You can type in a uh, observation ID number if you know one. You can type in a, a plant name, either common or uh, or a species name, not just a plant name, either a common or a scientific name. I'll try Japanese knotweed. And it sometimes takes a second, but shows us a query of Japanese knotweed. If you look off to the le left side of the screen, um, it has configured a query for Japanese knotweed. Um, I'll just bring it out to show the full extent of Japanese knotweed. There we go. And if if you want to see something else, you can click clear the query and that will should clear them. Sometimes this is a little clunky. We can clear it from the configuration tool too. So uh, you can also type in say a, a county name. And it will zoom you to the county. And uh, right now it's showing all of the species on the map. And you might notice that the uh, symbology for our observations has changed. We're now using what's called a Google vector layer. Uh, it it doesn't show individual points until you zoom. It, it basically clusters the data based on sort of a proximity algorithm and then um, allows us to sort of better uh, display the number of um, observations for a given area, whereas before you'd have points sitting on points and you really wouldn't have a great idea um, of, of the number of observations in a given point. So as you zoom in, these bubbles will break apart until you get pretty close, and then unless they're still sitting almost entirely on top of each other, you'll see them break down to a one-to-one -one relationship. Looks like we're in just about all the way, and we're seeing a couple where where there's still a couple right on top of each other. You can get information now. We before we had the identify tool up on the top. Now you just need to left click on the point, and it will give you a summary of all the the invasives that fall on that point. And then to get more detailed information, just click on the observation ID number, and it will give you the information on that, that species. And you can go back to viewing it on the map by just clicking the link. Uh, we, we also have, uh, you can look at the data still in various, uh, by various uh, data entry methods. Partner data is all the data that was uploaded in in sort of a bulk tabular format to the IMAP database. The uh, NAS data will be uploaded probably by the end of the month, and uh, that's uh, the USGS Nuisance Aquatic Species Program. 
uh, we're sharing data with them. And then uh, confirm, confirm data is any data that was submitted using the online interface. Um, and uh, has been confirmed by one of the IMAP staff as being a, a correct entry. And the unconfirmed is uh, also data entered via the online interface, and we just haven't gotten around to confirming it. So. We're also showing all of the assessment, treatment, and survey data. Turn on the plant assessment data. And this is uh, polygon data that shows areas where at following an observation, somebody went out and did an assessment of the um, infestation. And you can get to, to uh, that by collecting on it, or clicking on it, and getting more information on that. Just click directly on the polygon, and that will bring you into the information for that. And it shows the whole uh, record for the assessment. The same is also the case for um, the uh, treatment and the survey data fields as well. And we we still have sort of the same uh, set of complementary map overlay layers to sort of, sort of help. Uh, people understand the locations of these invasive species, observations, treatments, surveys, and assessments. We now also have the ability to print a map. If you need a quick map for presentation to put into a, a PowerPoint presentation, there's a little print button on the, uh, the bar above the map, and you click on that, and uh, you can change the title of your map up here and any comments you might have. A little self-promotion there. Mm -hmm. um, and where did it go? Sorry, the... And then if you hit it again, it'll bring you back and forth. Um, and then to uh, save that, I believe you just hit File, Save Page As, and you can, or I'm sorry, you hit over here, you can uh, print it to a PDF or send it to a printer if you have one installed. So now we'll go back to my IMAP invasives and um, show you some of the, the survey data entry fields. We've added some new survey types. Uh, previously we just had a lake survey. Now we have a host tree, cerceris wasp, and aquatic. And the way the data entry works for survey, assessment, and treatment is there's some fields that are common to all of the um, the, uh, the the types. Like for survey, uh, you'll have photos, uh, any sort of goals, the uh, who, who worked on it and information regarding to crews and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, what, what were the target species? This can be multiple species. You have the ability, so, and then, um, you know, which ones did you detect? Uh, and the uh, target, the, the uh, thing with the survey is that, that you, you only, uh, put the species detected from the list of target species. It's a, a, 
uh, surveys a planned search for uh, specified species. So if you had something that wasn't one of your target species, you could still report an observation. But this helps us sort of gather uh, absence data as well. When the surveys were conducted, where, what, what the weather was, and they're very, we have very, very few um, required um, required fields. We need a map, a, a drawing of the location, which you can just draw on a map. Eventually, we'll have the ability to import a shape file. Uh, the lead contact. Every everything's highlighted in pink. That is, and also the, you'll find an asterisk after that for the required fields. And let's see. And then once you get to the type, then you get questions specific to that um, survey type, so so that you don't have to sort through various survey fields that might not be relevant to that kind of survey style. Let's see. Treatment is very similar, and we have a whole bunch of treatment types. We have barrier, which could be anywhere from a fence to some sort of benthic mat, bioagent, which would be some sort of uh, any sort of biocontrol using, uh, such as the uh, um, the weevils or um, purple loosestrife chemical, any sort of herbicide or pesticide application, fire, which would be uh, prescribed burning, flame weeding, which would be something like a weed torch, grazing, mechanical manual, which is anywhere from hand pulling to, to you know, using heavy equipment to dig stuff out, and then shooting and trapping for, for uh, mammals and animals. And now I'll go into our custom observation queries. The custom query allows you to refine what data either ends up in a tab table that you might want or uh, displayed on the map. So you can uh, query based on various data sets, data that you've entered, data that you've observed, or all of the, the entire IMAP database. We have various geography types. We have the conservation lands layer. We have conservation lands by ownership type. This breaks it out based on is it federal, state, private, non-for-profit, um, various uh, municipal ownership types. County, does it fall within a specific county? Then we have it based, uh, you can look based on various uh, State designated regions such as the Department of Conservation or Department of Transportation or OPR regions. Um, and by water body, watershed, topo quad, and uh, regional planning districts. So you can do it by. Uh, by a, a specific look by a specific species by a genus by a species type are you looking for an animal plant or insect uh, a date range uh, the organization of the person reporting it if you have a project or by data status and these these can be sort of a uh, it can be a comprehensive query. So you could look for the Japanese knotweed, that was reported between January first. And today, and we can view that on the map. So we have quite a few Japanese knotweeds being reported this year. You can go back and reconfigure that query, or you can clear the query.
the query will also, I, I should have done this beforehand, work on on the uh, treatment data as, or I'm sorry, the, uh, on the uh, various types of data entry, so you could turn those into, on independently of each other. So we'll go back to my IMAP invasives. Survey right now, you can only do a simple search on. You can search just basically, it, it, it looks through the entire database and we'll find somebody, find a, a matching uh, string and, and select that out. Uh, same goes for treatment right now. And then we have sort of custom reports. This actually is still the custom query here. And this kind of shows a report for all of our data based on, um, breaks it up by species, by county. So it's a lot to read through, but it's a pretty uh, comprehensive report. And I think I've sort of hit on everything. Um, I guess I can field some questions now. I think we have a couple minutes. So thank you.